All right, so how are you guys doing today? I guess for this video, uh, we're gonna focus mainly on kind of the ways that I use, uh, the methods that I use and the tools or pieces of equipment that I use commonly to uh, make firewood. I'll just say make firewood and that kind of includes process it, split it, uh, transport it, everything else. Uh, in the last video, if you haven't seen that one, I basically just did all of the wood production um, with uh, just manually. So meaning I moved all the logs myself. I did everything like that. All right, guys, I got us up here. We're up in the upper pasture. I dropped the splitter off back there. We're gonna go up here to a tree that snapped off a while back. I'm gonna cut it down and we'll pull her out and go ahead and get, it, get the rest of this going. Get this camera turned around. Okay, folks, so we're up here. We got the tree right behind me. Um, hopefully, I'm gonna have enough chain here. I was gonna bring some cable up. I didn't end up doing that. I thought I'd be fine, but we'll see. So here's the tree right here. You can see where it snapped off. Doesn't have any more limbs. Doesn't have any more way of being a tree, needles are all dead. You can see where it's just been bleeding sap. So we're gonna cut this little bad boy down and uh, drag him out of here. Pretty beautiful day out to be doing it. Weather's quite nice right now. It's my kind of weather. I spent most of my life growing up in Alaska, so I'm used to you know, 70, 75 degrees and sunny, kind of like San Diego, except it gets cold in the wintertime. And for any of you who haven't watched my videos before and might be wondering, since this is about equipment and uh, methodologies, this is the Steel 441C. It is the Mtronic version. Uh, it's been an amazing saw for me. I kind of talk about that in length a little bit more in another video, but uh, I just can't say it enough. There's so many people on the internet who, for whatever reason, seem to have bad things to say about this uh, saw. And I just, <laughs> I, I don't understand it. It starts up first pull every time, you know. I've ran it hard and many times not put it away wet. <laughs> but... Uh, We'll get this camera posted up and we'll get this tree cut down. I know it's a little too easy for me to get going on a rant sometimes, guys. You gotta remember that about me. That I'm a little bit of a babbler. All right, here we go. With any luck, that stick won't fall over. Got my eye pro and my ear pro for you guys today. Any of you safety police out there. And my flashlight's on. Okay, so I'm sorry guys. I ended up just fast forwarding through most of this and kind of splicing it out. Because quite frankly, it was really just a showcase of basically everything you can do wrong in a day. Um, kind of a situation of uh, Murphy's Law. If it can go wrong, it will go wrong. And I left myself plenty of opportunities for things to go wrong. And they did. So I just kind of cut that out and figured I'd basically start the video back up where I've got the tree dropped and I'm going to skid it out with the tractor so that uh, we're not so much taking away everything that you
So, there you are. So, amateur hour on that one, folks. Go ahead, tear me up about it. I already know. I deserve it. But, we got her down. I didn't get hurt. <sighs> Treat had more of a lean and I think it just weighed more than I was anticipating. Sometimes it can be hard to tell with these dead trees just how dead they are exactly. Oh my. What am I doing? It's been one one of those kind of days, I guess. Or it's becoming one. <laughs> I guess to show you guys what I'm thinking or what I'm talking about here. I hate to cut down these little jack pines because so many of these trees get killed by the bugs already that I don't really like thinning things out too much without putting a lot of thought into it but <clears throat> obviously it's getting this tree out is gonna actually heck we're gonna pull in right here that's the that's the drive through express that's the express lane Zang, bust those down pull up right there that's gonna work good. Okay, here we go. Pop this up and take two. So I'd move you guys back over there so you can see a little better. All right, here goes nothing. See how hard it is to make a video? That tree was just about to knock over the camera here. I, I knew it. My intuition told me. I'll reposition it again. Now that I got that pulled out, I'm going to bring the tractor around. We're just going to hook up to that end and take her on home. And I'm telling you guys, this would just be a million times easier with a GoPro. Instead of trying to hold it with one hand, constantly trying to prop it up on something. So, if any of you out there are 
independently wealthy and want to donate me a GoPro, certainly won't refuse it. Then we can cut down on scenes like this, but it's what it is, right? And for any of you out there who, again, maybe are not more familiar or not super familiar with cutting wood or making firewood or cutting logs, this here is called a choker cable. That there is called the ferro roll. This is what you would call a swedged splice, and this is just a shackle. That's the terminology for all of that. Um, and there is ratings for what all of these can be used for, but I'm well, well within um, any type of safe working load limits or anything like that, so I've got no worries whatsoever. Especially on this big chain, this is a grade 80. Um, so, it's a big boy. Just huge, vastly overkill for this, but that's kind of the name of the game whenever you're trying to film things, like I said, and just trying to get it done at the same time. Let's see what time it is. It's 5.08. Gotta be over to dinner, washed up and everything. Let's see my relatives at 6. But luckily this isn't going to take long. Is it, folks? Appreciate you guys being patient with me. Well, I got all that hooked up. <laughs> Hopefully I wasn't recording my fingers there. If I was, my apologies. We've just about got her licked here, folks. I'm probably gonna have to make the splitting section of the video another day, because I kinda amateured around so much. This video could maybe be titled, uh, How to Make Money Selling Firewood If You're a Moron. Not that you guys are morons, or that I'm trying to make videos for morons, but. In this case, I was the moron with many of my practices. So, I'll show you guys kind of things that can go wrong and maybe what not to do. You know, everything's a learning event, everything's an experience, a learning experience, especially for me. Because <clears throat> there's no one doing this with me. I'm out here on my own. I've, uh, Lost or wasted, depending on how you look at it, a lot of money in the process of learning to do all this. And I'm still learning. You know what I mean? Okay, we'll double check our connection here. We'll slide that back just a bit. I'd like it around that limb. Perfect. Go up here, grab the saw, throw it in the bucket, and we're gone. I was trying to think of a word that rhymed with bucket, but all I could think was fuck it. <laughs> Excuse my language for the viewers at home. But, as a quick little side rant, I don't believe that language is something to be 
frowned upon or looked down at or uh, labeled, you know. People, my, my teachers in school would always say, in fact, a lot of people would say, you know, if you if you use bad language, what that tells me is you have a poor vocabulary. Well, I don't, I'm not a linguist. <laughs> um, I, I'm not working for Merriam-Webster's, but I do have a pretty decent vocabulary. Uh, at least the university that I attended seemed to think so. And uh, again, not to say that I'm any expert when it comes to, you know, writing or words or uh, all matters pertaining to vernacular. But my thinking is that if you're going to teach your kids not to swear, teach them why that is. You know, no one ever, no one ever says, well, here's why you don't swear. They say things like, like I said, if you use bad words, that means you have a poor vocabulary. Mm, well, not necessarily true. Uh, where I understand that being concise can indicate uh, concise and articulate or succinct and articulate or just articulate in general could indicate that you are uh, operating with a higher level of vocabulary because your words are going to have more of a concise meaning. I think that plenty of times it just is more suitable to say, what the hell, you know, it's more relatable. Um, you're not being a good communicator if you're using big words, if you're using big language, if you're using terms, if you're using nomenclature that people who you're talking to don't understand. At that point, all you're doing is being a blowhard and an asshole because no one's getting anything from it but you. Back to cutting wood. <laughs> and that's what we'll call that little segment. Uh, learning life with Cody. <laughs> Give it what you will. Oh, don't do that. Thank you, baby. like a nimrod I blocked my way off with the splitter but what did I tell you guys we call that the get her done get her done get her done it's a little bit taut 
Back her up, back her up. What have we got going on here? That's weird. That's weird. Well, no, really, Cody, it's not weird. Uh... <laughs> For me, in hindsight, talking to myself there as if I could hear myself talking now. And I guess uh, just kind of as a commentary for you guys. It's not weird because I forgot, or I didn't forget, I guess I neglected to charge the battery. I neglected, let's say that I wasn't aware that the battery had an issue or that the alternator had an issue. Well, then in that case, you got to take ultimate responsibility I had to take ultimate responsibility. I didn't. Um, and so I neglected to consider that maybe that was an issue with this tractor. And in the end, it really didn't matter this day because uh, there wasn't anything pressing happening as far as time other than I needed to go and eat dinner with my relatives. But outside of that, um, it was more so just a thing that, you know, kind of serves as a reminder Maybe there would have been a wood customer waiting. Maybe maybe someone else needed to use that tractor. Maybe there was something pressing and I was too stupid to check if the battery was charged or to ask if the battery needed to be All charged. Right guys, I think we're so just think of those that. Um, tractor died pretty much right here where I was going to park it anyway. So I guess if I was going to leave the video with some parting notes or parting thoughts, if they weren't already just blatantly obvious to you viewers, um, if you got to fix something, fix it right. Fix it, you know. Uh, don't just leave it. Don't limp it by. Don't just try and get by and make it work. Don't, you know, sometimes the get her done, yeah, I get it. That's funny. I like saying it. But really, you know, if you're going to get her done, what you need to get her done is your priorities properly. So that uh, when it comes time to use equipment or when it comes time to do something, you can do it right. You can do it professionally. And you're not looking like a fool. I kind of showcased exactly today. Um, what happens if you don't do it right and you just try and get her done and you just try and uh, make it work, you know. People are big on saying those kind of things. We'll just make it work. We got to get her done. Good old country attitude, you know. And I'm not saying that that's, that's you know, true of everyone, but um, that those are kind of things common that I hear. So, like I said, you got to get something done. Do it right. Take the time to do it right. Leave it looking nice when you get done look nice while you're doing it that way people will think that you're going to do it right the next time all right hopefully you guys enjoyed the video if you're going to give me some criticism please make it something that's not so obvious have a nice day and take care and be safe